Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of I Work in Sport live interview. This is episode number 11 and uh, yeah, it's great to, to see you. Uh, let us know where you're watching from, wherever you are. We already had the comments here from our friends from Ignit Ignitix uh, in Malaysia. Great uh, to have you there. Uh, today, we're going to have a um, super cool guest, Ed Bowers, a young entrepreneur um, that is uh, working in the field of education in, in sports. Uh, let me just introduce myself. If you don't know me, if this is the first time that you're watching this, I'm João Frigerio. I'm the founder of I Work in Sport. Uh, if you don't know I Work in Sport, we, we started as an event. Uh, in 2017 and today we're a platform that connects uh, recruiters uh, and talent we promote education uh, and try to support career growth in sports so you can always find more imp information in our website iworkinsport.com or also you can uh, there you go follow us in our social media channels pretty much everywhere as um, at I work in sport, except on LinkedIn, where we're linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash I work in sport. Uh, there we also have a group where you can participate. It's the We Work in Sport uh, group. And you can also follow some of well, our episodes. They go there a little later, but uh, if you have to jump off and uh, you can't watch the whole thing now, and watch, um, want to listen to that in a, in a podcast format, you can find us as well on iTunes, uh, Spotify, and uh, Google. Right. Um, I'm going to bring my guest today. Ed Bowers is here. Hello, Ed. How are you? Hello, and thank you so much for having me for today. I'm looking forward to it, and let's create some value. Yes. So the, the topic today, Ed, and uh, I just mentioned uh, our podcast, which I'm really just learning, starting to play uh, with it, but you're super experienced in it. You created one five years ago when the people were not really talking about <laughs> podcasting. It was a new thing. You were telling me before that you actually had to explain to people what podcasts uh, were. And uh, through that, you kind of created a, a nice brand. You were telling me that that's not why you created the podcast. It's not, uh, you didn't mean to create a personal brand through that, but that definitely helped you. And that is helping you to, to create or to develop your, your business on the consultancy side and the coaching side. Um, and just for us to give, um, a bit more a perspective to people watching at home because as i said in this previous 10 episodes here we did mostly people that i've known for many years people that uh, i've met in industry been in contact with uh, for several years uh, some sort of very senior uh, people a lot of history one episode here we we got uh, the person mr patrick nelly who actually brought coke to sponsor FIFA for the first time wow. uh, in 78 in the World Cup in Argentina. And since then they they became um, and pretty much invented what sports sponsorship is. Uh, but we also had some younger uh, people coming uh, to the show like Adrian Bueno uh, in, um, in the US, which I find that is very relevant for, for our audience because they also can very much relate. Uh, with uh, with our guests, in this case, yourself. So you are someone that I never met in person, right? As I said, I had some friends uh, here for from a long date, but this is um, an also a nice way for us to build sort of relationship. And I think it's a good example of how technology allow us to reach out and, and to meet people. So. We actually spoke for the first time at the end of last year through a friend in common, Marius Christos, um, uh, that's actually told me about no, you. Told me about you uh, at the Soccer X convention last year. We got in touch, and I was really impressed with uh, 
with what you've been doing. So to wrap up this kind of long introduction already, let's start uh, telling the people, so who are you, um, you know, what you've been doing in sport until now. So what your career has been until now, since you're graduated in university and creating your company and running your podcast. Sure. And can I just firstly say again, like this is the power of technology. I'm just going to repeat what you're saying because this is about your personal brand, right? And you have a personal brand in person when you go to somebody at a network event and you've got a personal brand online. And this is how we got connected through our content. So um, basically, my name's Ed Bowers. I'm the creative education to sport. And the key thing I'm going to say here, education to sport was just an idea back in you know, 2015, 2014, I graduated with a university degree from Durham University, specialised in physical activity, sort of psychology and sports policy. So that's what I actually was really passionate about. Actually, going back in time when I did my A-levels and GCSEs, I had a real interest in sport with regards to the history of sport. I love the history of the Olympic movement, for example. So going back in time, 2014, I graduated and like anybody, um, I did do some internship and you mentioned the company already. Uh, in my second year, I did some work experience at SoccerX uh, where I met um, Dorian Estra, as you know, with FBA. Um, yeah. Literally, he was opposite to me uh, back in 2013, tables wise. We we're interns and then to the right, Patrick Cannon, who's doing great work there. Um, so that was the first time I had been introduced to the business of sport, well, the business of football, of how these events influence World Cups. I think at the time it was the build-up for the Rio World Cup. But then the week before, because um, I did two internships, this is a key thing for students, every summer holiday I did some sort of work experience to get me a better understanding about the industry because I, I'm a believe you have theory knowledge and then practical knowledge. Theory in the classroom and then practical when you do these internships. So I actually did a a week at um, Sky Sports. I was actually part of the uh, final week of the British and Irish Rugby Lions Tour, so the rugby department, where the British and Irish Lions team beat Australia the final week. And it was cool to be involved, creating some videos that went on the website, went on live TV, and just to see really behind the scenes of having the pleasure of watching four hours of rugby in a studio. Um, but on a serious note, I did actually manage to learn the processes of how television is run live if that makes sense because we we're based in Isleworth and the game was out in Australia so it was good to understand the communications of how a TV t station runs of a live, sport, a live sports program so after that I had a great little scope and there's one thing I think we're going to talk about is networking um, my first ever like proper start of building my network was a guy called Paul Brighton and that's he was my tennis coach and he's now a co-founder of Entourage Sport, but he was actually my tennis coach. He then got me the nice opportunity at Soccer X. I have interviewed him on my podcast show, but the point I'm sharing here is it's people that create opportunities for yourself and how you create opportunities for others. This is just a learning tip I've learned along the way. So 2015, I was in this dark place of what's next. I had the degree, I had some experience, I had a decent think CV, but... Um, it took me six months to figure out what did I want to do with it. And I had a lot of recruitment agencies, nothing relating to the sports industry, by the way, wanted to hire me. And it just wasn't for me. Um, so I had a choice. I reconnected with a guy called Oliver Clark, who was at Soccer X. He moved to Benchmark International. I actually worked with him at Soccer X, generating leads. And um, basically, I reached out on LinkedIn. It was my final resource. I went, "Could I? is there any opportunity at uh, Benchmark? I love to work with you again because I was just finding him emails, names, business alike associates for the BT Sports Industry Awards. And he said, I'll get back to you. And he rang me on the phone randomly. I uh, didn't recognize the number. And he goes, Ed, what can you do for me? It's Oliver Clark here. And I went, what I'll do for you is I'll generate you leads every week. And I was meant to be there a month. I was there for three months. Thankfully, Nick Keller, who's the founder, gave me like he's the founder of the company, nicely let me stay on. But when I left, um, I left with Oliver 800 leads. So I was averaging 60 leads a week whilst making tea, whilst meeting clients, whilst, you know what it's like being an intern. You've got to do all those work, yeah. little jobs behind the scenes. But that's yeah. part of the process. You're learning the company. So I learned about Benchmark International. 
um, benchmark talent where they look after Will Greenwood, Richard Hill, John Amici at the time. This is a key bit. John Amici, I met in person. I actually made him a cup of tea and he's six foot seven. I'm five foot four, like a dwarf. And I made him this cup of tea. And just to create a bit of fun in this chat, that is how I got him to mentor me. Uh, he, I interviewed him and he, he's my first mentor in the sports right. industry. So basically after my time at Benchmark, I realized there was a disconnect in my opinion where the universities didn't know um, the, 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 the agencies. For who doesn't know Benchmark, they do the sports uh, awards, yes? BT Sports Industry Awards, yeah, that's one of their events. Um, but when I just left, really quickly, I was speaking to my peers from uni, speaking to academics. I was trying to get John Amici going to Durham because I knew he would add value. Uh, if you don't know John Amici, he's Britain's most famous NBA player. He's also the first, actually, gay athlete to come out. And also he's a psychologist, which he does great work during the pandemic. He's been working with the NHS in the UK to help with their stress level. So he's, he's a very intelligent guy, and that's why I wanted to learn from him. But when I was at Benchmark, I just knew there was a disconnect. I knew that the industry didn't really know what the, like the academic world was doing and vice versa. But most importantly, students didn't know the companies, didn't know the roles that were in these companies. And then finally, they didn't know the people of influence, meaning who are these people doing great work, moving the industry forward. So I literally, um, I was based in Surrey. I moved up north uh, to Lincolnshire. I decided to move back home and literally set up Education 2 Sport. I wrote it down, actually on this, like on a piece of paper on this table. And I, want, I, I knew when I was planning it, I wanted to create a sports career resource. I didn't know how, I didn't have, I didn't think about podcasting yet. But I knew that there's got to be a sports career resource where people can learn from the best, learn about the industry and the different sectors. So one day I was figuring this all out whilst learning about business with the textbooks I had down below. So I bought an Amazon, how to run a business, like all the basics, self-taught. I'm uh, still learning, by the way. Uh, I don't think your learning ever stops with the world of business because everything's changing like now with going digital. But at the time I listened, I came across iTunes on um I sorry, I came across podcasts on iTunes randomly and I clicked on the link and basically mum said, find some inspiration. So for eight hours, I listened to one podcast and I, I was hooked. I said to myself, this is it. I'm going to be a podcaster. So I wrote down this time next year, I'm going to be a podcaster. Uh, officially, you know, like a football player, you're really a football player when you get your first contract. It's like, so I literally looked online, self-taught how to get the equipment, the process, so I learned from John Lee Dumas, who I managed to interview in episode 18, uh, right. which till this day I'm still proud of because he, he's still a role model. Pat Flynn is a great marketer and Lewis Howes. And, and I still learn from these guys to this day. So what I'm trying to share with people is find influencers who you want to learn from. Even if you're starting out, that's a good place to start. So I decided to do a weekly show. I put Literally, I batched out 10 episodes. I did my academic, uh, Dr. Martin Roderick. I actually got on a train to do the interview in person. I did a phone interview with my headmaster, Greg Davis, at the time. And then the third one was John Amici. And like any, when you create content, like just to be clear with the topic, I did not start this podcast show about Ed Bowers. It was about solving a problem to educate people about you know, a certain issue, not issue, but certain solution to improve an industry. In my opinion, it was sports career guidance. So that was the goal. Not, And like anything, I did 10 episodes and I went, how can I get 20? How do I, like, I never imagined doing 100. And then I just kept on going. But on the same time, I was building a brand. So I was learning how to do a website and, you know, go with WordPress, pick the domain, find a theme, like everything, um, you know, I was just learning as I was going. So this website is like my fourth version. It crashed yep. once, which didn't help either. So there's always going to be setbacks. But um, I'm just that, sorry, and sorry, and I can't the Final one, because uh, one thing I learned, especially in technology, always changing and, and, and improving. Yeah. Listen, I think this is uh, one of the the main reasons actually I wanted uh, you to come uh, and the show. So what you described, a lot of what you described there, when you're doing so, these contacts and developing your own business you're you're what 22 23 years old at the time 21 at the time 
Oh, I just turned, yeah. Time, yeah. And today you are? 27. So it's, it's taken time to build credibility as well. <laughs> People don't realize that one, but you've got to. I, I think, I mean, it, it's great. And I think the, the main, one of the main uh, key messages here is go and do it. Right. And, uh, and uh, the, one of the reasons I wanted to, to invite you to the show is, is that, you know, uh, that, that's a good example of you set out to do something, you, you find that this podcast is something that you want to do or where you want to work and you went and, and started to do it. And still, I mean, uh, it is very possible that a lot of people here um, watching at the moment didn't know you before. Uh, but, but that's okay, right? You you start to, to build sort of the brand, even big names that you mentioned there, like Lewis House and Pat Flynn, that I actually follow almost daily now with uh, his uh, daily show. Um, we know uh, these guys, but so many people here watching probably don't know, and that's okay. Uh, the, the important thing is to do it, and this is the main reason why, why I'd like to, to invite you or why I invited you to this. And, and another nice thing of uh, working in sports is just by this introduction, you, you go and start mentioning names and then you say, oh yeah, those are friends in common. That's probably we didn't know. So as I said, Christian is a great guy at um, F FBA and um, Paul Brighton. Oh, grande Paul, he speaks well, for kind of Portuguese, yeah. Portuguese as well. Yeah, good, good friend. Um, Entourage was at our event uh, earlier, well, in May, digital event as well. So, uh, big hello there to, to our friends at Entourage, to, to Paul. I will, uh, just before we continue, uh, loads of messages start to, uh, started to arrive. So, of course, I, ha I have to mention uh, Erica. Thanks for watching uh, here from, from Lausanne. That's Joseph McGrath. Uh, I recognize from... Joseph. I hey, think Joseph. He's on the, uh, yeah, on right the, from uh, Facebook group. Yeah, okay. And Akila has been uh, watching us from the past few weeks. So keep returning from India. It's great to see you here. Ameya um, as well, last uh, week was here from, from India. Just uh, some, some people saying hi. It's great to see you on the other side. Uh, uh, Tijana, how are you doing? You know Tatiana. Yeah, great. Tatiana, she, yeah, um, podcast special guest, brilliant sports lawyer, um, yeah. Awesome person. Great, great. Great to see you here, uh, Tatiana, as well. So, Tatiana, if you're enjoying it, you know, hit the, the like button there. <laughs> and uh, Jaime, uh, here based in Lausanne. Otacilio, thank you for, for watching. Kumar, well, he meant Nepal, as, as it is here. Just a few more people that uh, I want to mention now from Kenya. Another great thing to work in sports is that's so international. Yeah. And then uh, the things that you bring and what we're going to talk about now are also, you know, relevant everywhere. Olá, Regina, uh, watching from Brazil. Great to see all these uh, friends uh, here. And let me just remind them, you know, to give uh, Ed a like. <laughs> and Tatiana, if you're new in the channel and others, uh, don't forget to subscribe so you get the alerts for uh, next ones, which uh, will be super cool as well. Now, Ed, so you described your route to, you know, what you're doing at the moment, how you decided to do what you do. But uh, let's talk to, well, to everyone that is watching us. What is it exactly that you do now, right? If I understand correctly, you have uh, a few er different areas where you operate. Kind of like myself, I have my consultancy on one side, and on one side I run the I work in sport business. You do have um, a coaching uh, business where you help people uh, to communicate on the online space, on the digital space, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, and consultancy as well, or work more with corporate clients um, and organizing events as well. I'd like you to, to share what you do. And then on top of that, you do the, the podcast. So tell us a bit of what you do. 
Yeah. Sure. And to be fair, this is the side of my career where I'm still fine tuning. Like, just to be clear, I want to go back a little bit. When I was interviewing these people around the world, I was still figuring out, like, what is my niche? Like, do I want to be that sports career coach or do I want to be a pod? You know what I mean? I think this is important when you start creating content, you're figuring out along the way. So when I did around 100 episodes, I knew I'd, I've got a good foundation and knowledge which I could pass back to students. So I actually took on a couple of students and I said to them, look, buy my new ebook. Um, Cause I had another ebook then I have done some digital products, but I said, I really just want to test if my knowledge works. And uh, lo and behold, some of it worked. And some of these guys got internships, volunteering opportunities whilst building the brand beforehand, before they reached out. I think there's a bit of a mistake when before people reach out, for an opportunity they don't have their brand in place they don't know exactly what area of the industry they want to specialize in like what sector like everybody says oh i want to be a sports marketer okay how many people want to work in sports marketing but if you said actually i want to work in sports marketing and really specialize in women's football and even specialize in how to promote grassroots football for girls to get more engaged in the game can you see how i've niched that down so when you niche down that's where the real opportunities are to get an opportunities in that sector so it took being honest from 2017 that's when i had the confidence to sort of coach i sort of behind the scenes i spoke to some students who are listening to my show on my newsletter and then i started to experiment products i've done ebooks i've done it like i've done an online course but realistically um i, I yeah I launched my academy last year i'm going to be rebranding it now uh but what i ended up doing was project work and so, for example, 2019 was a big year for me. I did my first international workshop in Singapore at the end of last year where it was about the mass participation industry. Nothing about sport like football or it was actually going out there to do a workshop. Chris Robb um, invited me. But the biggest one is, um, as we mentioned br uh, briefly, is uh, Maris Christoph Fantos with the Athens Women's Football Summit. And I want to share this because I, I actually, sorry, think I on. Oh, they, they're in. They're in. They're, right, so. they're here. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to share the journey of how I work with you guys. Um, about 18 months ago, Marius rang me up and he goes, Ed, I've got an idea and it's crazy. And I went, you're speaking to the right guy because I had a crazy idea back in 2015 and I know the nerves you have. So Marius said, look, do you want to help out? I went, yeah, sure. And this is the key bit. I said, do you mind if I can try a marketing strategy? And we decided to do, and I said, can we do a webinar? Not to sell, just to educate. 100% education about inequality in women's football. We had uh, Dr. Donna DeHade from Hague University talking about like why students need to take this seriously if they want to apply themselves with us to inequality, with regards to mass participation in women's football. How, you know, um, so we, we did that and it went really well. We had, I think, yeah, 80 live. And then we had a repurpose of 120 people who watched the replay. And then that led, so this was voluntarily. I just went, look, can I just try it, see what happens. As a result, I ended up being a moderator for the event. And I'm still proud to this day. I was actually a strategic partner. So my logo was on the back. And till this day, I'm involved with the event this year. So what I'm trying to say is I sort of provided my knowledge and skill sets, should we say, for free, because I wanted to help Marius out because he, he, he we're, you know, he, it was a startup idea. And then a year on, which was last year, we had uh, 130 sort of uh, like delegates and like speakers. We had, uh, I think you, um, you know, we had Ebru, we had uh, Maggie, as you know, uh, in the same class. So these are some of the people I've already interviewed on my podcast show, but to meet them in person and to see how an event is run with us just like improving an industry sector, which is women's football and also inequality in women's like women being more involved in the business world and leadership positions. It was something I wanted to get involved in because it needs to change. So that is my buy in and why I'm so passionate about the Athens Women's Football Summit is because of the impact like my podcast show, my impact was to educate people about the industry. So it was after that experience and then Singapore, I went, OK, there's new strings to my bow. I think I can be a decent moderator. Um, I think, uh, well, I'll talk about an online event I did a couple of months with Amy one day, but I was test the key thing is I was testing my skill set. That's the key thing through my podcast journey, all the skills, communication, technology, 
So going back to Amy one day briefly, during the 13th of March when COVID was announced, I spoke to Amy on the phone. I said, look, I've got this idea I've been really wanting to do for actually years. I wanted to do an online event, like a summit. That, that uh, is Amy. Amy one day, she is the founder of the African Sport Network. She is a, I met her at the Athens Women's Football Summit, by the way. So we're talking about people. When you meet people in, pe meet people in person, that's when the opportunities arise. So we got on the phone. I said, look, my idea was to do uh, 10, 10 speakers in 24 hours to promote sport development peace. And Amy said, Ed, I'd love to get involved. I said, well, should we do 20? Now you're involved. You can do 10 interviews. I can do 10. And this was the key point. She said to me, Ed, you do know next month, the 6th of April, is International Day for Sport, uh, International Day for Sport Development Peace. I went, right, that's the day we're going to do it. So in, bearing in mind what COVID going on, in two and a half weeks, we managed to get 22 speakers. Uh, 24, we had to do one recorded um, uh, like uh, like interview but on the day we did 22 speakers 10 different time zone my first interview was half five in the morning the five final one was five and nine thirty at night uh with Misha Sher and literally we educated 3,000 just on the day and it reached 13,000 worldwide and uh till this day it's my highlight for 2020 to be honest uh, how we managed in a very short period of time. I worked with Amy's team who are fantastic. They're based in Kenya, I'm based in the UK. So what I'm trying to share here is a learning lesson. If you've just heard this example is, you can create opportunities with people who inspire you. And as long as you can both are on the same page of what the goal or objective is, anything's possible. That, that is a great uh, ad. Uh, again, good, good example. And another friend that you just mentioned, Misha, another, well, he's a big, big guy in the business as well, very yeah. successful, someone to look up to. Um, I'm just going to hit a few more uh, comments here that uh, arrived. So Pedro Papadopoulos, I imagine from Greece as well. <laughs> Hello, Pedro, how are you? And uh, Jaime uh, leaves a comment, credibility is a key word. Uh, that's great. And there is a mayor. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing okay your your name, um, is interested in getting in touch with you. And there is uh, Ed's website and link to, to the podcast is in the description below. So you can, uh, th through that, um, reach out to, to him. Is that or Yeah, that perfect. Or yeah, education2sport.com. Any emails, send me them through there and I'll respond. Great, great. Um, I'm going to... Um, ask you to talk to us now more specifically about podcasting which is you know the title of, 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 sure. of the talk today before i do that i actually want to ask you watching if you listen to podcasts regularly and if you do which ones would you like to recommend any i follow ed so uh <laughs> recommend that you, you follow uh, him as well we i uh, i work in sport also has a uh, a podcast that you can find, as um, as I mentioned before. But um, which ones uh, do you follow and you recommend? Whether doesn't matter if it's in sports space or not. If you can leave in the comments here, we're gonna suggest to people watching as well. This is you know a community. We want people collaborating. But Ed, more specifically, how has podcast helped you? I mean, you decided to do the podcast, you had the intention to help people through podcast, but I believe that podcast probably helped you on the way as well. So why, yeah, tell us about that. I think the first thing, what I learned the most with my podcast show is confidence. At the beginning, I was, I was quite a nervous guy, uh, to be really honest. Like Even when I was at Benchmark, I didn't know how to do a cold call. Do you know what I'm trying to say here? So what it built my podcast show is confidence so when i reached out to my special guests it gave me confidence with a reason of communicating with that individual so if it was let's say john amici oh, i was so nervous typing an email i actually wrote the cup of tea story which i mentioned earlier and that was the buy-in of him saying yes and then after I did a great interview by the way um i then very nervously said Look, would you mentor me so the first thing with my podcast show that i've learned the most is confidence 
um, it, and also get out my comfort zone as well. Um, like I'm happy to break down the show from a technical perspective, but with regards to myself, the skill sets was confidence, communication skills, and yes, the byproducts. Like if you, I never looked at it like this till very recently um, because of like consistency, which is a key factor of podcasting or any content creation, by the way. Um, you know, the, the thing I learned the most was um, being, being consistent with why I'm doing something. So the podcast show was like almost a, a way for me to make sure I was turning up. I think this is a thing, it was like a challenge, like how do I get to 10? How do I get to 20? How do I get to 100? So when I decided to do it, that, that's another thing I learned was accountability on myself. Now, from actually an industry perspective, the, the thing that people are listening to me is like I'm saying all these names and network, but I never realized the people. Like I'll be honest, I started with under five on LinkedIn, now I have 1,200. I kid you not, I'd rather start with five because when you have a large network, a thousand people and you're replying, I try and reply to every message on LinkedIn or start a conversation. It, it takes a lot of time. Uh, but that's how, uh, like, this is what I say to my students when I coach and I do it to myself. You know, networking is a conversation, starting a conversation. So don't, sorry, I hope, hope don't mind me having a, like a bit of a coaching thing here. Don't just go on LinkedIn and add people just to build the numbers up and you're not going to do anything with it or you're not going to add value to that individual. So when I reach out, I try and build a conversation where we add value to their goals. Um, so I say a question is like, how can I help you with your goals at the moment? And it's amazing how a podcast episode can help them with their goal. So, and, and that's what, so this is the practical end now of the podcast show. When I started building my show, I, I went, right, let's build a plan. You don't just podcast and put something out you found a structure. What did I do? I listen to eight different shows and I find what I like from each of those shows. And I build the format. Then after I've done the format of how I like it, like if you listen to my show, um, th there's a format that goes on for everyone. Um, there's a few tweets here and there, but not many. The next stage is, okay, my plan of action of who I want to interview. Um, I try and have a list of people who inspire me. And then I listen to my data of what's really popular so 2018 for example people love my sports legal related podcast what did I do the next year more podcasts on that um, that means that people want to learn how to like I, I, if I'm being honest if I start my career again I'll be a lawyer because it's one of the most transferable careers um, especially in the industry um, if you wanted to be an agent or want to represent a club just it's just a learning lesson I've learned uh, reflecting uh, yeah. So, and then this year, I learned that people want to, uh, well, like there's, I've got a mission for this year. I want this year's podcast theme to really highlight uh, women's sport professionals. I want to create role models for them. Um, like for me, there's one, um, uh, FK Saviego, um, um CEO. She won, she's the first, I've got a name. I can't believe I'm saying that. On live but it'll come to me but she, I interviewed her this year Sabrina Bulger Bassage sorry there there's the name she's the first CEO in um, Bulgaria to win um, the double in you know in a male competition and her, her story is phenomenal absolutely inspiring and I just and she was on the summit as well and we talked about how to get her how, how she got out her comfort zone as a CEO so this year's theme is about really acknowledging women's sports professionals so people at university can learn from them um, with regards to role models or be potential, uh, potential mentors. So as I said, everything my podcast, everything I do reflects my podcast show. Um, so have I answered your question from a practical standpoint? Please ask any more questions because I'm happy to decode oh, yeah. anything else um, yes, or how uh, I do my show, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, we can maybe, uh, we can also ask the audience uh, if any of them are doing podcasts at the moment or planning to do. So we can, maybe I can ask you to give uh, maybe sort of a technical tip. Yeah, sure. What yeah. one or people to, to follow um, for that, of course, you know, just by Googling it or going to YouTube. And, and if you look for how to podcast, then many things will come up. But if there's anything in that area that you you would like to, to share as well, but I think that's a more than 
even podcasting specifically, I think for me that the big lesson here is to do something and to communicate. So you may not feel when we're talking, we're doing this on video. So you may not feel very comfortable in doing video. So you might prefer to do it a uh, podcast or, or if you're like me and you have a weird accent and not a perfect English, you might be reluctant to even be speaking. So you would prefer to write. So blogging is something uh, that you may prefer to do. But I think that uh, having that platform to uh, put your, your thoughts out there or when you're talking about uh, creating the space for you to reach out, I think uh, a great thing that you mentioned there, and this I think has been important to me as well, when you have, whether it's a blog or whatever it is, you have this platform that allows you to go and reach out to people that maybe you wouldn't reach out to if you didn't have anything to offer. Um, it's, a, it's a great thought or, or a great strategy. In a way, what, you, what you're doing, as you said, you, you create a platform or something that you can offer to the person that you're going to reach out. So, uh, to, to the people that is watching, if you do have any specific question about the technical part of podcasting, um, please let us know. Just going to go back to a few comments that they keep coming. Oh, and by the way, questions. So if you do have questions to add, uh, feel free to, to uh, leave in the comments as well. So uh, Joseph from Philadelphia, who you know, um, is suggesting work in sports, a bright clap uh, as a podcast, I suppose. And he also says I've struggled in sales, but uh, been using this time to become more educated, to be comfortable in it. Well done, uh, Joseph. Uh, there's comments from, I'm gonna say Mr. Comney, or is it Emmer Comney? Actually, leave us a message because you uh, come to the show often, almost every week. And as, as you're saying there, I like your show very much. Thank you. Most of the times I watch live streams when I'm working. Don't let people see that you're watching uh, the video while working. Huh? Uh, but greetings from Greece. We have a big audience in Greece. And it's not only because of, of, um, of your work with the Women's Football Summit there. Uh, here, Ashwin suggesting a few podcasts as well sports life journey turn to yarns with uh gaurav kapoor ed show yes <laughs> let's follow ed and ameo again uh, so thanking us for uh the discussion so yeah so if you do have uh, questions uh to add please send them uh to us Ed, let's go back. So um, if people may be interested as well on, on the coaching that you do, uh, it's not the traditional coaching that you're going to guide people in their professional aspirations, uh, sort of in that, in that traditional way. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had um, Adrian uh, Bueno here. She coaches specifically on helping people find jobs. This is not what um, you do, right? You do specifically some coaching on uh, digital communications, helping people to communicate in that space. Is that it? Do you want to? Yeah, look, it's a bit of a mixture. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, sorry. You. So mm. my question is why people look for you and what's the outcome expected by most of the people that look for you? I think what people look for me is they come to Education 2 Sport to be educated about the sports industry, educated about the people. So when people do reach out, which is it happens and they go okay ed i'd love to really learn how to position myself in the sports industry i'm a student i can relate to students because i've been in their shoes then you know maybe i, I say look you know I, I can do some like coaching consulting however you brand it and then what i do is you know i've got a sort of it relates to my booklet actually way by the way which i wrote in february it's like step one know what you want step two what's your sports career purpose Step three, build that personal brand. That means polishing up your CV, all your social media uh, channels, by the way, that are consistent. Uh, step four, uh, this is a key one, find your mentor. Like I talked about John Amici already. My current mentor is Chris Ducker from Upreneur. And then uh, step five is get experience. 
uh, do pro, um, pro bono work, or do volunteering. It's the key theme. I know it's a buzzword, but what that means is when you're getting when you're volunteering your time, you're actually putting yourself out there. That's how you should look at volunteering. Step six, and this is probably the the, the stage I'm at, is you're trying to master your area of expertise in a niche. And then step seven, as you've mentioned already, is get started. You know, step seven, if you don't do any of the steps beforehand um, and you don't apply step seven, you're not going to you're not going to move forward in your progression, not just your sports career, but any walks of life. So that is what I do. There's the framework, because that's what's worked for me um, personally. And, and then and then I adopt when I work with somebody, I sort of say, well, how can we position yourself with content creation? And I've mentioned some tips uh, with regards to my podcast show. So everything I coach is related to my experience, period. I don't reinvent the wheel. I literally share what, you know, what, what's worked for me. Um, with regards to, you know, other client work, if people want to do projects, um, you know, I can share what I've done. And then if that works with their business model or their goals, that's what projects is about. Like the, the first career tip I had at Benchmark International somebody said to me the sports industry is a project based industry think about it everybody's thinking about the next game after the next game is the next project the next game after that or the competition it's the same in the business world it's the next project the next event so and i think after this covid what, what we're going through i think that's where it's moving to afterwards uh, so if you can specialize in a skill set or specialize in, a, in in like knowledge in a certain sector you're going to be hired for that particular role in a project. You step out and you're going to do another one. I just feel that's where it's going. I could be wrong. You could say, Ed, you're wrong there. Fine. But that's what's worked for me because that's why I'm involved in different projects, which are using different skill sets. So I hope that's answered your question. <laughs> no, listen, it's, uh, it makes a lot of sense. I think it's you know, gratifying to, to see, you know, someone in your position that is uh, going and making it, you know, happen so yeah so uh, definitely inspiring so if you guys are enjoying what uh, ed is saying please give that like uh but most mostly subscribe as well so, um so you get the alerts for the upcoming uh interviews actually next week we're going to have a very serious topic i'm going to talk about uh, that uh more towards the end and there's some more comments uh, arriving ed uh, so Ines, hello from from London. That's where you're based, right? Uh, no, you're Cambridge, Cambridgeshire, uh, in the in the country. Yes, thank you. Oh Ines. dear, my good friend. Now dear and I go way back. Um, does great work with regards to what he does in Egypt. Um, we were connected on Twitter, and yeah, does great work in the football industry. Cheers to see you here, dear. <laughs> Thank you for watching it, uh, Dia. So, Ed, um, for me, before we sort of start to, to wrap up, uh, how does the COVID-19, you know, the pandemic, how has that affected you? <laughs> Honestly, I've never been that busy. Um, as a small business, it was challenging. It has been challenging. I'm not going to lie. I think a lot of companies are struggling in, in, in a certain element of their business. But with regards to having the summit, which was on the 13th of March to the 6th of April, that was a great distraction. And then after that, I did a project work um, where I helped uh, Alistair McCall involved in like building an online course with him, which has been great fun. So I've had, it's only now where my workload's busy, but not as intense. But during the, the, the actual, when, when COVID was very confusing around the world, I've never been that busy. I, I like reflected now for, with regards to the summit. I was doing phone calls with people six o'clock in the morning because I had people in Australia I had to speak to, and then late at night uh, around nine thirty ten uh, for people who are based in um, America. So with regards to the internet, there's um, you just you've got to balance the time zone. But uh, I was very busy at the time, so. As I said, I'm grateful for what I do. Uh, I think this is important. I actually, this week's podcast was a topic about don't compare your career journey to others. I know some really dear friends of mine who've been furloughed. Uh, companies have, you know, had to let them go, and these are great friends in the sports industry. 
So bearing in mind, I don't have that experience from the the, the effect of COVID. I'm grateful what I do. So, yeah. so yeah. Um, in hindsight, I'm lucky. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you do this uh, work on digital, there's a lot of people that are are in that space that got indeed busier than than they were before. Um, Ed, I think, I mean, great uh, to to have you uh, on the show. Uh, any anything else in particular that uh, any message that uh, you would like to to share? How how many podcasts are you at the moment? So this week I launched episode 190, um, which I'm pretty proud of because it was a solo episode and I sort of shared my reflection over like, on, on, as I said, about comparison. I think uh, one tip I'll give is if you're just started, if you're pivoting your career, if you're figuring out your next step, stay in your lane. It's the biggest theme I've had over the last 90 days is stay in your lane. So whatever you're doing, even if you're going through adversity or even if you're doing really well, stay in your lane because the one thing I've learned as a theme on my podcast show, it comes down to two things. People work in the sports industry for passion and it comes down to the people you work with. So if you stay in your lane and apply, apply your passion with the people you work with, hey, um, that's why we do what we do. That's my point of view anyway. So I'll finish on that note. <laughs> That, that's that's great. Thank you so much. Um, Joseph leaves another comment saying that was uh, awesome advice. I agree with him. Um, it's really great. I mean, to, to have someone uh, like you that is, you know, making your way and uh, uh, doing hard work and, and competent work and making leaving your mark. I I hope that comes to inspire some of the people watching as you started pretty much as, as I did from nowhere, not knowing anyone, you mentioned, you know, a couple of uh, links on, on LinkedIn. We, 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 of course we did very different paths, but with some similarities in believing in what you do and, and, and going for it. And uh, yes, I think as, as we mentioned, the podcast air, uh, thing you created to help people. And I believe that's now helping you as well. And this is with like most of the things that we do in, in our life. If we do it seriously, uh, with integrity, you know, that will come back. Uh, life is a mirror, right? So you, yeah. you, you, you get what, uh, what you plant. So um, Ed, I want to say big thank you uh, for, for participating. So Kumar is also saying thank you uh, to Ed. Um, just so you know, next uh, week and, and, and people watching it uh, now, going to have a super uh, serious uh, discussion. It's going to be the first of our uh, shows that we're going to have two guests. Uh, it's going to be a continuation. I I've been helping CIS, the International Center for Sports Studies, and they um, organize the FIFA Masters, and I'm part of, of that community. And in the past two weeks, there was a discussion about, you know, how uh, sports uh, was dealing with the racism in, in, in America. And I'm going to bring that discussion of, um, which is very much, you know, it's, it's always been important, but now it's been super talked about, uh, unfortunately for, for the wrong reasons, uh, the racial problem that we have, but also the, the gender issue of being, you know, women in, any business, but the sports specifically, I think they have special challenges. So we're going to have uh, Ed and uh, Gabriel Selassie, uh, a friend of mine, as well as uh, Nikel Moore, uh, both from, from the FIFA Master, uh, both working in America. One worked at the NBA, uh, now at Emerson Collective, and uh, the other one at ESPN. They're a successful, I would say, and they're black women uh, with a successful career in, in sport. And we're going to be talking about that. You know, it's, a, it's an important discussion. And I invite everyone to tune in and participate and to be part of that important topic. Now, Ed, again, thank you so much. Just before we go, uh, just a few more com uh, comments that are coming. Erica uh, liked your interview. So did I. Um, Amaya as well, Dia, uh, your friend. Yeah, take care. Cheers, Dia. 
Jaime as well. Thank you all for, for watching, for, for being here. Hope to see you all uh, next week. So bye-bye, everyone. Ciao, ciao.